To be able to create our fave icon, it will bring us back to this thing we have here called href. So let's explain it. What is an href? When we hover around it, you can see it, it gives its explanation, it says attributes specify the URL of a link source. Basically, what it does is that it links one thing to another. So when we have href, we are linking something to another, right? We are linking something. That's all. So now we are trying to link, we're trying to go from here to link to this thing called favicon.png. But if we click on it, so it's a link, it means that you can click on it. Now, if you hover around it, it will tell you follow link. You have to first press control on your keyboard, and then it will become clickable. Once you press control on your keyboard, it becomes clickable. You try to follow it. See the error it gives you. you send an error code when loading the image. Whenever you're trying to load an image, this is how you can test if it's going to load. If it gives you an error here, just know it would give you an error on the web page because it's not linking successfully. So it means that here we'll would come back to here shortly in a minute and see why it's not linking successfully. But for now, these are other things. So Google Fonts, you know what the fonts, the styling, the, the fonts. Basically, so if I come here, Google Fonts, you can see this um, design, right? This is a font. So here, this template uses Google Fonts. Now you can see Bootstrap. Okay, now Bootstrap is something that I said you benefit a lot from this video. And the way Bootstrap works, you have to link it. You have to copy the link. So here, this is the link to the Bootstrap, and if we Click it again, you can see it's unable to open Bootstrap. Now, Bootstrap is a library and it's in a folder called library. Later on, we'll talk about how we can link this Bootstrap successfully. Then we also have libraries.cxs. All of these links are not working as of now. Then we have our main CSS file. Our main CSS file is the place where we write the raw styling. Then our bootstrap is to get bootstrap touches. Bootstrap for me is just like adding a touch of brilliance to whatever we're doing. Bootstrap is a very, very fantastic app. We can just use it to add a touch of brilliance. You could use bootstrap to style your full page. And I've done that a couple of times, but bootstrap would you just give your, your page that, that sweet looking touch by just copying things called classes, right? And now this is the license of the templates we are using. So you can get more from bootstrapmade.com, right? And all of these things here are comments, okay? These are to help you understand what's going on. So when you're writing code, it is quite important that you put comments. Later on, we would be working on various features on the back end. We are going to put comments in all of them. So the next thing we want to do is to get the appropriate styling for all these pages. And to do that, it will take us back to our static. Recall here that we had this static folder and we created admin and root in both of them, but there's nothing yet on it. So apart from the template folder, recall that the template folder contains HTML. However, this static folder would have to contain more than just HTML. A static folder would contain CSS files. So I'm going to go to the, the templates I'm using, this one here. I came to File Explorer to do this so that it will not be confusing at all. We had copied everything in the index. Right now, I'm going to copy library, JS, images, CSS. Copy. I would not copy contact form. I wouldn't be needing it. It would create us. And I'm going to come to static, come to roots, and paste. All of those things are copied from there. And that's it. We're done. So I went to the templates we're using and then copied all of those things now and paste them in our static folder.
And so since they are in our static folder, all we have to do is link all of these things to our static folder. So to link them, we can just make a one case scenario for them. For example, this href here, I can say dot dot. Now this is like going backward one step, going backward again. You can see static, you can see roots. And then from here, we can basically link everything. For example, images and then favicon.png. Now, if we click on this link, you can see the fav icon displays. And the fav icon is just a simple um, blue button, which represents bootstrap. So how did we get here? We just link them to our static folder by going one step backward, one step backward, till we get to static, till we get to roots, and then images and all of that. All right, so I'm going to copy this one now from here. Copy. And then everywhere I have href, I'm going to paste this in. How do I know everywhere I would have href here? Well, for now, I'm just going to paste it um, in all the simple ones. So href, 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 href. Just paste them here and just make sure you paste everything like this. And that's all. That's all. <laughs> just like that. That's all. Now, if we come back here to show how that's all it is and refresh our code, we should have a difference now between how it was before and how it would be now. And here we go. Here we go. We have differences. And now these differences, you can see that the page has changed. We now have our background photo, which would resemble something like this finished one. We now have, but no text. So in this finished one, we have text. We have all of these, but nothing just here. So what's up? What is wrong? Well, let's go back to our code. And I want you to scroll all the way down, all the way down, all the way down to the end, right? After this session called the footer. Remember, I earlier talked about the footer session in websites. And the footer session just simply refers to this ending part, like the foot, that's why it's called the foot, the foot of a website. So after you get to the foot session, at the end of it, I want you to look at all these JavaScript libraries. Now libraries make your job easier. They make it sweet. They make you faster. And you should incorporate using libraries in your projects. Like Flux itself, it's a library. So instead of us looking at how to connect front end and back end, you'll see how Flux makes our jobs easier. In the same way, we are going to paste that thing we copied, that link that we've just copied, we're going to paste it down here throughout all of them. And then when we click on it, you would see that here yeah, we have our mini JS. If you look at all of these, you can't you can't read them. These are minified. They've been, they've been compressed. It's a library that makes our jobs easier. All right, so we can paste all of this now everywhere, every single place, all the lines. Um, and that should do the magic for us. Now in the contact form, I let say we do not need it for now, right? But let's just paste it at the end. And we click on it now. Okay, it was not even found at all. All right, so we have all of our library files. 
Now, in the scripts main JS, you also want to make sure that you have this in your scripts mini JS. Fantastic. And that's all. So, all the scripts, we pasted this. Um, what we've just copied. Now, this is the path. You can call this a path, right? You can just call this a path. So it means that you're trying to link from this file to that file, that, that path, the href or the source script, whatever. You, you can just call this a path. So add this path to the rest of the link and then they would go. As I've said before, to check if it's working, just hold, click Control, click on any of them. And if they open, it means you're in line. So we can go back to our code now. Scroll up again. Refresh. And here we go. So when we refresh, we now have a better version. Now let's let's decrease the font size of our screen a little and we have everything. So something that looks like the finished product, we now have it here, except for the logo. So at this point, if you hover around all of this, you see all of these fancy navigations and all of that. Well, that's what templates can help us do. So instead of us to, on our own, try to write all the codes for all of this, we just get there quickly with the use of templates.